when you have these symptoms, when you have this disease that you've been diagnosed with, it's like you fell over a waterfall and you swim up to the surface and you're looking for the best life jacket possible to keep you afloat in this pool of whatever the disease is that you're suffering from. Q Music. Places, everybody places. We're starting in three, two. It's time for Life Interrupted Radio, a show dedicated to practical skills for your mind, body, and soul. We're hoping we'll go in one ear and stay there. Here's the host of the show, Sharon Saylor. Welcome to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio, where we look at the rise of autoimmune disorders. The NIH estimates nearly 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder. To put that in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. You'll be as surprised as I was to find out what autoimmune entails. I brought together top experts that range from doctors, specialists, nutritionists, researchers, and even those recovering from autoimmune to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information about autoimmunity and how to live your life uninterrupted. So let's get started. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com, and we're here tonight with Dr. Thomas O'Brien. He's one of our favorite, favorite guests because he's able to take what I consider sometimes really tough to understand stuff and break it down for us so we can understand (laughs) what we can do to make our autoimmune healing process go quicker and smoother and he believes in making a difference in the world one healthy human being at a time he's an internationally recognized and sought after speaker and workshop leader and he specializes in the complications of non-celiac gluten sensitivity celiac disease and autoimmune disease as they occur inside and outside of the intestines in November of 2016 he released betrayal the autoimmune disease solution they're not telling you an investigation into the global effects of issues underlying our autoimmune system and chronic disease. And currently over 300,000 people worldwide has watched that docuseries. It's fantastic. It gave me so much insight, completely eye-opening. As well as the, he's the author of The Autoimmune Fix, which is a book that outlines step-by-step the development of degenerative disease. I can't talk today for some reason. <laughs> and gives us the <laughs> tools to identify our disease process Years before the symptoms occur, and I think many of us that are now experiencing autoimmune can reflect back on our life and see the progression of, if I'd only known, if I'd only known, if I'd only known, we could have seen this coming. I found that out with certain things that I recognized in my health history, too. So welcome, Dr. Tom. It's always a thrill to talk to you. Oh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure, you know, in your little mind blips there that we sometimes referred to affectionately as mind farts, where you just kind of <laughs> lose where you were going or it, you know, it, it just stops. That happens to so much of us or so many of us. And, and um, the question is, why does that happen? What's happening here? And my guess is there may have been something in your world that you were exposed to recently. And some people would say, oh, my God, I had a pizza the other night, although I know that you wouldn't do that. But uh, I you know, crave there may it, have been but I don't do it anymore. <laughs> I understand. I understand. And uh, I walk past a pizza parlor and it smells great. It still does. You know, there's some things that just don't smell great anymore, like cigarettes. I mean, I smoked when I was an undergrad 40 years ago, and but they just don't smell good anymore. And, and uh, uh, McDonald's doesn't smell good anymore. It did for many years, but uh, it doesn't anymore. And um, and so the cravings that we have, they will di- dissipate after a while. As you get stronger and healthier, those cravings for the old stimuli uh, will dissipate. Well, it could have been a brain fart for that, sure. But I'm also going to say it's I'm so excited. That was where the brain fart was coming from. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. Thank you. That's really kind. I wish I had that effect on women 40 years ago. (laughs) Well, I always love talking to you because you're just such a... I can just go down any rabbit hole and you're able to keep up with me and that's what I love. And one of the things I, uh, when I was talking to you not too long ago about... You got to come back because one of the things I don't think people with autoimmune understand is the subject of inflammation. 
I mean, we all hear like, oh, you know, you've got inflammation of the gut, you've got inflammation in your joints, you've got inflammation. But first off, I want, I'll just overview here. What is it? How do we get it? How do we get rid of it? That's where we're going today. How's that? Oh, great, great, great. Okay. We all have the same bodies that our ancestors had thousands of years ago. We have the same genes. You know, there, there hasn't been much genetic variation until the last two decades. In the last two decades, unfortunately, because of all the toxic chemicals that we're exposed to, we, we become mutants um, <laughs> at the genetic level. And it's true. So you can't say that we, we have the same genetic structure as our ancestors, because uh, if you get geeky, no, we don't. We've got some changes already, but wow. it's just starting, but it's going to get a lot worse uh, quickly, e- exponentially. But in general, we all have the same bodies that our ancestors had thousands of years ago. And the way that uh, everything's about survival, you know, sur- survival of the fittest, um, survival of, of the organism, the, the body depends on being able to deal with your environment. You learn how to deal with whatever environment you're in. Your body has to learn how to deal with whatever environment the body is in. And in old days, what were the threats? Yeah, real old. I'd say saber-toothed tiger, uh, maybe coming up exactly <laughs> coming up exactly. sooner than that, freezing to death, not getting enough decent food or clean food, bacteria. Right, right, uh, uh, bacteria. Um, th- th- that's really the main threat was fight, flight, or fright, you know, to save your life, saber-toothed tigers, um, and then bacteria, uh, viruses, molds, fungus, there was some virus, but um, I, I don't know if there's much evidence that there was much of a viral problem back then. But uh, bad bacteria, you know, a dead animal, an animal dies, falls in the water, and that's where you drink your water from, you get bacteria. How is your body going to protect you? How are you going to be safe from that? And so the armed forces in our body, your immune system is the armed forces. It's there to protect you. There's an army, an air force, a marines, a coast guard, a navy. They're called IgA, IgG, IgE, IgM, white blood cells. They're all part of the immune system there to protect you. And the way that our armed forces protects us is they've got guns. <laughs> if you're a little, I'm just remembering this. We'll say <laughs> metaphorically. <laughs> that's right. That's right. This uh, nephew of mine, his father's a. Uh, police officer says, my dad's got big guns, right? So he was very proud of his dad with big guns. You know, boys are like that. But your immune system has big guns. It's got small guns, little six shooters. That's called the innate immune system. And a six shooter, you know, just a pistol can do a lot of damage. And so the first response in our body is called the innate immune system. Every living thing on the planet has an innate immune response, as far as I know. Uh, Every fish, every animal, every bird, um, every monkey, every human, we have an innate immune system. And what that means is when a stress comes in, it fires chemical bullets. They're called cytokines. Uh, And they're a chemical bullet that uh, is to attack the bacteria that you've been exposed to. Uh, remember back then there wasn't much other than bad bacteria and maybe some molds and fungus, uh, but that was the only other threat besides saber-toothed tigers and snakes, you know, having to fight for your life. Uh, (laughs) But in terms of chemistry and what we're exposed to, there wasn't lead poisoning and mercury poisoning and uh, PCBs and DDT and all the stuff that we'll get to, you know, that we have today. Uh, So the the body didn't have any defense against all that stuff. It just had the innate immune system. As species advanced, um, the higher species developed what's called the adaptive immune system. That when the innate immune system wasn't strong enough to protect you, when the six shooters couldn't penetrate the bulletproof vests of the bacteria or whatever the threat was, then the adaptive immune system developed, and that's antibodies. And your Mm -hmm. body makes antibodies. And so if you get a a constant stress or a repeated um, enemy coming in, stressful enemy, uh, bacteria in the place where you live, for example, you know, if uh, 
Uh, if you're sleeping under a tree and there's bacteria in the ground there and you're exposed to it every night, but that's where you sleep and the six shooters can't take care of it anymore, your body would go to the adaptive immune system. Humans developed the adaptive immune system and we make antibodies. So you make antibodies to bacteria. You make antibodies, uh, any chemical threat uh, that you're exposed to. And with that concept in mind, Now we come to humans. So our ancestors had all that stuff, and we have the same body as our ancestors. The reason they had it was to protect them from bacteria, mostly bacteria and a little bit of other stuff, but mostly bacteria. In our world today, we've got so much more that we have to fight. But we still have the same six shooters and the same antibodies. Now, the antibodies are bazookas compared to a six shooter, they really can cause a lot more damage. They have a bigger explosion radius, if you will, than a bullet does from a gun, from a pistol. Uh, and they're much stronger. They do, when, when the pistols can't handle it anymore, here come the bazookas. <laughs> so the way both the pistols and the bazookas work is that they go after whatever they recognize as a threat, and they start to destroy it. And the way that they destroy it is by inflammation. That in that cell, the bacterial cell, it's going to destroy the wall of that bacterial cell. Either the innate immune system with the cytokines will destroy that bacterial wall, or if the six shooters aren't strong enough, the antibodies come in with bazookas to destroy that bacterial wall, the cell wall. And the term for that is inflammation. It's fire. It's heat. And um, so we, when we are inflamed, we are red, we are hot, we are, we are on fire. So if you think of your immune system creating inflammation in your body to protect you, that's really a good thing. Yeah. We wouldn't be here without inflammation. So inflammation is not bad for you. Excessive inflammation is bad for you. There's a big difference. You've got to have inflammation. You've got to. So the problem, though, is that in our world today, we have so much that our bodies are fighting, and we'll get into that, that as far as I know, every degenerative disease that they've identified, every disease is a disease of inflammation at the cellular level. In diabetes, the cell's on fire. In Alzheimer's, the cell's on fire. In Parkinson's, the cell's on fire. In rheumatoid arthritis, the cell's on fire. In psoriasis, the cell's on fire. In loss of hair, it's called alopecia, the cell's on fire. That at the cellular level, diseases mean, if you've got a disease, it means that tissue's on fire. It's inflamed. So the traditional medical approach has always been, let's put the fire out. Mm -hmm. And so you have the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Advil and Tylenol and Motrin, those kinds of things. And when they don't work, they come in with the stronger anti-inflammatory drugs that are called steroids. The problem is that all these drugs have side effects. Some are not as bad as others, but they all have side effects. But when you have these symptoms, when you have this disease that you've been diagnosed with, it's like you fell over a waterfall. And I talked about this last time a little bit, but I'm going to go into a little more detail. You fell over a waterfall and you fell down into the pool below and you swim up to the surface, uh, but, and, but the waterfall keeps filling into the pool, so the water's very turbulent. You're in this pool of diabetes. You're in this pool of joint pain. You're in this pool of multiple sclerosis. You're swimming around trying to stay afloat, and you're looking for the best life jacket possible to keep you afloat in this pool of whatever the disease is that you're suffering from. They're all the same with this concept. They're all the same. You're inflamed. You're in the pool. You fell over the waterfall. You got a disease. You got these symptoms. 
you're wearing this life jacket to try and hang on, but the waterfall is so so much water and so much turbulence. Sometimes the life jackets work to keep you out of symptoms. Sometimes they don't. But what you have to do, of course, you put a life jacket on. Of course, you take the medications to feel better. Of course. But you can't live there. You're still in the pool. Oh, okay. That you've got to get a ladder. You've got to get out of the pool. You've got to walk up the hill. You've got to get up to the top where the waterfall is. You've got to walk back upstream before the waterfall and figure out what fell in the river. What was it that got me in this river that sent me over the waterfall? That's functional medicine. The first thing is that all diseases are diseases of inflammation. Inflammation is not bad for you. Excessive inflammation is bad for you. So when you have a disease, you've got excessive inflammation. So you have to figure out not only how do I get a life jacket on to try and dim this fire that's going on, but where did the gasoline come from that's being thrown on the fire? Because if you put a life jacket on to reduce the symptoms, you still likely have the gasoline coming and it's going to manifest somewhere down the road. So if you're a diabetic and you're taking the drugs for diabetes, just read the literature. You have a much higher risk of dementia, like non-Alzheimer's dementia, and a much higher, actually, uh, number three of the five types of Alzheimer's that have been identified is uh, diabetic Alzheimer's from blood sugar problems. Wow. That's the third type. And, or if you have diabetes, you're at a much higher risk of having heart attacks. You're at a much higher risk of having strokes. You're at a much higher risk of having an amputation. But you're taking the drugs. You're wearing the life jacket. Your blood sugar is not getting bad anymore. It's a little more stable. But you're, gonna, you're likely to lose a foot or you're at a much higher risk of having a heart attack. So wait a minute. Are these drugs fixing the problem? No. They're a life jacket that's helping at the time. And that's a really good thing. But you got to go back upstream to figure out what the heck happened. Yeah. Where am I throwing gasoline on the fire in my life? Okay, I'll stop. Now. <laughs> okay, I know. I just love it because you just geek out on this stuff like I do. We need to take a quick commercial break, guys. <laughs> and when we come back, I'm going to talk to uh, Dr. Tom about. Question was about. Um, obviously, or at least I think obviously, it's more than one thing that threw the gasoline on us. So we'll be right back and right after this quick commercial break. <laughs> Life Interrupted Radio will return after these messages from our sponsors. It's great sponsors like these that keep this show coming to you every week. Be sure and stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com to learn more. This episode is brought to you by mindfulnessinactionbook.com. To get your free four-minute guided meditation to relax, refresh, and renew in just four minutes. And who doesn't have four minutes? Stop by MindfulnessInActionBook.com now. This guided meditation is in handy MP3 format, so you can use it anywhere, anytime. Download it now at MindfulnessInActionBook.com. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. I am Fidel Mshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. We're here with Dr. Thomas O'Brien, and he is the author of The Autoimmune Fix. And today I brought him back onto the show because he's just always a wealth of information. And I had a great big question that we haven't talked about very much, and that's about the topic of inflammation. And before we had to take that quick commercial break, one of the metaphors was about getting... uh, I'll use the metaphor of getting gasoline. You get into the water, thrown over the waterfall, get a life vest with your uh, medications, yet there's still something going on. But I just wanted to refer back for a minute because some of the times it was, the metaphor was in the singular. And I'm thinking that oftentimes it's not just one thing that might have thrown me over the waterfall, correct? Or is it more of a cascade event where it's one thing and then the next and the next? Or could it be all at once or does it really matter? There's usually one thing that's the straw that broke the camel's back. Oh, okay. But there's a whole lot of straws. There's a whole lot of straws. You're, you're absolutely right. It's never one thing, but usually there's one thing that was the last straw, if you will. And so... Sometimes people will dial in on that one thing, and they'll say, oh, look, you've got mercury toxicity. Do you eat tuna fish? Well, yeah, well, all the tuna fish has mercury in it. You need to stop eating tuna fish, and let's get that mercury out of you. And so you detox to pull the mercury out, and your brain starts working better, or your child's attention deficit's a little bit better. But it rarely is just one thing that has to be fixed, very rarely. Usually, for, for example... Uh, Dr. Dale Bredesen at UCLA, he runs the Buck Institute, Alzheimer's Research Institute. He published in 2014 uh, in the medical journal Aging, completely reversing Alzheimer's and cognitive impairment in nine out of 10 people. Wow. 90% success rate, completely reversing it. It took five years, but there's 37 things on the checklist that you have to address in order to do this 37 things but when you address these things do they have gluten sensitivity yes get it out of there do they have dairy sensitivity yes get it out of there they have elevated homocysteine yes bring it down do they get six to eight hours of sleep a night no bring it up get more sleep do they walk every day do they have some type of exercise yes no yes no do they have mold exposure and there's just a list of things and dr bredesen said something that was really surprising to me And, uh, you know, I was startled. I mean, I learn new stuff all the time that I didn't know, but there's not usually something that startles me. But this (laughs) startles me. This one startled me. He said that because he he just did his first uh, presentation for doctors about four months ago, and there were 300 of us in the room. And he's teaching the protocols now, so doctors all over the world can do this. And he said, you know, there's 37 things on the checklist, and now there's actually more. There's almost 50 uh, things that you have to check. But he said, usually when you get to the top four or five and you fix those, people start feeling better right away. Wow. And that startled me. Just four or five. That startled me because, uh, right, uh, once you get to the first four or five, and he said it takes two to three months, uh, but they start noticing the difference right away. And that really startled me because with Alzheimer's, you think of how far gone people are when they have that diagnosis and, and the MRI show how much of the brain has been damaged. But even in those cases, when you stop throwing gasoline on the fire, when you figure out where the inflammation is coming from, when you go back upstream above the waterfall, go upstream to figure out what fell in the water that eventually carry that person down the river and over the waterfall and into the pool of brain dysfunction, when you figure that stuff out, Uh, with the first four or five, they start noticing a change. But in general, you know, it's 37 that need to be looked at. And some are going to be more prevalent than others. Some people will not have heavy metal toxicity, but you've got to check for it. Some people will not have mold toxicity, but you've got to check for it. You know, some people may not have chemicals that have accumulated. They're called endocrine disruptors in their body, but you you have to check for it. You know, there's all these things that you have to look for Because these lives that we live, people don't know, and they need to wake up. (laughs) Here I go. (laughs) We really need to wake up. The World Wildlife Fund published a study about five or six months ago now that shows that there has been, on average, a 57% loss of all wildlife on the planet 
from 1970 to 2012. In 42 years, That's almost 60%. we've lost 57%, 57% of everything. And for those species that live near fresh water, it was 78%. 78% of all the foxes are wow. gone. 78% of the wolves, 78% of the black bears, gone. Why is that? Because they're drinking the water. And if we were drinking the water coming out of the streams by your house or drinking out of the river cut by your house, you'd get cancer earlier and you'd be unable to reproduce earlier, just like the animals. Wow. We're poisoning and killing the planet and we have to wake up. There's not one thing that's the primary trigger for inflammation causing disease. You know, I cut my teeth in this world uh, starting in 2004 by going on the uh, lecture circuit to teach physicians about wheat sensitivity and gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. That's a primary in the food world, throwing gasoline on the fire for most people. That's a primary, but now it's so bad that uh, the toxic chemicals are so bad. And some of us live in these cute little communities, these nice little worlds. I live in a really beautiful place. I call it zip code envy. <laughs> where I live in Southern California. I mean, it's just there are flowers everywhere and the people are nice and there's lots of good food around and the ocean's beautiful and all that. But, you know, go to the backwoods of Nebraska or Arkansas and see how people are living and what they've got um, access to. You know, you because your world right now where you live doesn't look too threatening. I mean, if you're listening to this radio show, you're one of the smart ones that knows that, oh, I'm going to pick up a couple of good points on this radio show. And so you take the time to listen. But the vast majority of the world won't listen. They, they rather go out and eat their sliders. Uh, and they're, they're not aware yet of, of what's going on in the world around them. And they think that uh, the 50 pounds they're carrying is, well, that's just the way it is. Pass over another Coke, would you please? You know, the, the, they just don't think about this. But you folks who are listening to Okay, I'll stop. Well, I just have a quick question. <laughs> it, because I'm thinking about, what, you know, I travel a lot, and I spend a fair amount of time in Florida. And in those, as you call it, in zip codes, for sure. And my question always is, some mornings I wake up and I smell pesticide or I smell herbicide. And I'm like, this can't be good. So I don't, kn- I mean, I can ag- agree with you on the argument of not knowing and less income less opportunity but what sport what sport what sport for men has the highest incidence of prostate cancer what sport what sport golf golf because of the probably exactly right golf the exposures yeah that's right because they're walking on that stuff there's you'd never see a dandelion on a golf course and these guys are walking on it all day you know when they're out there for hours and hours and hours with the exposure then they take their shoes off and they're, you know, they're, they carry their shoes, so their hands are all full of this stuff now that's in the grass. Why? Uh, everybody needs to read my book. I promised <laughs> yes. my staff I'd say that because I don't usually. I'm sorry, I need to. Well, if you I'll go to too, the dr.com. I, I have it right here, oh, thanks. too. <laughs> thanks. The dr.com. That's the doctor.com. Just don't spell the word doctor out. And the book's right there on the front page, and you click on it. It takes you to Amazon to buy the book, but then you get a bunch of free handouts um, that um, at the website there that you can get that relate to the book. So when you read the book, there's so many pearls in there. For example, why is it that we recommend you leave your shoes at the door and don't wear your shoes in the house? It's not some Zen Buddhist thing. Not to track in all that crap. It's because you, you walked on the sidewalk coming home and your neighbor sprayed the sidewalk with Roundup yesterday to kill the dandelions. You got Roundup on your shoes. You walk in the house with Roundup and you walk on the carpet, you got Roundup on your carpet now. Your teenage daughter's on, on the carpet in the living room doing her homework on the floor and she gets Roundup in her hands and in her legs and whatever part of her body is touching the carpet. Roundup binds into the receptors in your body. Roundup kills the good bacteria in your gut, almost worse than uh, antibiotics. Not quite, but almost as much as antibiotics. And so you leave the toxic world outside. That's one of the, if, if anybody were to take the time to read the studies 
that are out now, and you know, you, you can't because it's geek world, you know, but if you were to read this stuff, it would just startle you of how much of the world we're killing off because we're blindly letting all of these companies pour millions and millions of pounds, hundreds of millions of pounds of toxic chemicals on the planet every day. Well, I don't see it. My, my garden's nice and pretty and the flowers look nice where I live. But it, here's the statistic, and this is from the Journal of Pediatrics. This is right out of the journal. Every day in this country, it's 50 pounds of toxic chemicals per person per day being dumped in the U.S. Over 300 million people. Wow. Multiply that by 50. And that's, that's what you've got. It's over 1.5 billion pounds of toxic chemicals per day are being dumped in the U.S. This is out of the journal Pediatrics. Imagine a 50-pound bag. Imagine it's a 50-pound bag per day per person. Every day. So if you've got four people, four people in your family, that's 200 pounds a day. That's four 50-pound bags a day for a family of four that are being dumped. We used to say 10 years ago, oh, we have to check your urine for pesticides because you may have been exposed to some pesticides. Nobody recommends that anymore. Why? Because everybody's got pesticides in their urine. Everyone does. The average number of chemicals in a newborn baby's bloodstream is 186 toxic chemicals that aren't supposed to be wow. there. That's the average in our country today. That's the average. So now what you have, we're, we're killing the planet, everybody. And I, you know, I never thought I was going to be an apostle, but I can't live with myself if I don't just talk about this with the intensity to wake you up. Uh, this is, a, oh my, oh my. You know, because I noticed what happened to me. I was flying home from Austin, teaching in Austin, and I was reading the newspaper, and there was an article, the World Wildlife Fund has published a study in conjunction with two major universities that there is an average of 57% loss of all wildlife on the planet. And I said, oh, that's too bad. And I turned the page to read the next article. Mm -hmm. I was numb. I was completely numb to this. I land in San Diego, walk out to the car in the parking lot, drive home on the highway. I almost hit the brakes. I said, wait a minute. We've lost more than half of everything that lives on the planet in 42 years, 1970 to 2012. Yes. Holy cow. If you let that sink in and you really take in what that means, your grandkids are not going to have a planet to live on. This is not like some airy-fairy, long-haired, hippie, health food nut stuff. This is world-class scientists saying this again and again and again. And nobody's listening. Not enough of us are listening. Oh, my goodness. We need to wake up, everyone. And we need to take a... <laughs> yeah, we really need to <laughs> we wake up. We need to up. break for commercial again on that because uh, this is so important. We'll get back to Dr. Tom in just a couple of minutes here after this quick commercial break. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. What are all the things you witness online in a day? Cats playing piano, selfies on your feed, your friend's picture being turned into a nasty meme that's been shared 50 times, 51, 52. When someone's being bullied online, it's hard to know what to do. Now you can speak up with the witness emoji. It looks like an eye in a speech bubble, and it's in the symbol section near the clocks in your phone. 
You'll let the world know it isn't cool, and you'll let your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Do you want to be a better leader? Have better relationships? Become more self-aware? Be a better communicator? Hi, I'm Sharon Saylor, best-selling author, professional speaker, and executive coach. And my life passion is empowering professionals to be the best that they can be. After years of working with professionals, I've discovered the seven things nobody is telling you that can cost you your clients, sales, and even your career. And I want to give it to you free. You've heard my show. You know my passion. And maybe we'll be working together sooner rather than later. So go grab this ebook now to find out the seven things that's costing you big time over at SharonSailor.com forward slash radio gift. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm here today with Dr. Thomas O'Brien, who is the author of The Autoimmune Fix, as well as the documentary Betrayal, The Autoimmune Disease Solution They're Not Telling You. He's known as the Sherlock Holmes for Chronic Disease and Metabolic Disorders. And as you can tell already, he's a clinician par excellence in treating all sorts of things from chronic disease and metabolic disorders. And from that functional medicine perspective, that's what I like about it. Very holistic, not just saying you have a headache, take an aspirin, that's it. it he's about understanding the, I'll say the whole realm, because it's never just one thing. Dr. Tom, let's talk a little bit now, um, bringing it back to the personal responsibility level. We've talked about the statistics yeah. on the worldwide things and what can we do if we've already been diagnosed with an autoimmune condition and we're all probably nodding our heads like, wow, I, I've been exposed, I'm sure. I mean, up until my autoimmune condition, I, ha I had no problem th throwing a little roundup on my driveway. Um, I had no problem doing all right, sorts of things because right. I believed the marketing. <laughs> so, I mean, I was raised on TV dinners. I believed the marketing. Yeah, exactly. I, I believe the marketing. That's the um, that's the bumper sticker. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And that's a great question. So there's only one thing that you must do um, when you've been diagnosed, and that is get educated. There is no magic pill. There is no detox program. There is no vitamin regimen that's going to protect you. It's going to help. It's going to be a little bit better life jacket, a less traumatic life jacket to the rest of your body, but it's not going to fix it. You have to get educated. This is a whole different world now. It's not the same health world that we had 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It's very, very different. And the only way that I see in the big picture that we're going to survive and thrive as a species or as a family, your family, that your grandchildren are going to thrive is if you get educated and you learn that many of the things you were doing were just wrong and not intentionally. You didn't do them because, knowing they were wrong. You just didn't know. But now you're going to know. You have to get educated. And there's two things I'd recommend you do that will help you that I promise you when you do these two things, I promise the result will be three months from now, you're a very different person in how you think about your health. The first thing is get my book. Read the book. This is 35 years of my life in this book and all the little pearls that I've picked up. And, you know, I don't, you know, I, th I think I get like $2.30 for a book. And so that's not the reason. You know, I'm not, it's not my own self interest here. It's really, we, we have to stop. What's happening, and this is the only way I know to do it, is trying to reach as many people as possible. And the second thing to do is go to betrayaldocumentary.com and watch Betrayal. I went to England, Ireland, Germany, Spain, Portugal, Canada, the U.S. I interviewed so many wonderful scientists, the super geeks, and... I knew the questions to ask them because I read their papers. You know, that's how I picked who to go interview. And I read their papers. And I asked them questions in everyday language about this stuff. 
And then I interviewed clinicians, doctors, who were applying the principles that these researchers, these scientists were publishing about. And then I interviewed patients of those doctors who apply, who were compliant with what the doctor recommended, and they tell you how they reversed MS. They're out of a wheelchair, and their MRIs have showed eight lesions in the brain two years ago. Now there's one lesion, and it's almost gone, and she has no symptoms. So if there's only one thing you do, it's get educated. And I'm trying my best to make this really technical, geeky information that your doctors are supposed to know, and they don't. They just weren't taught this. I'm trying my best to make it understandable. You know, Einstein said, make things as simple as possible, but no simpler. (laughs) And so I need you to up your game to understand this stuff a little bit, you know, uh, like like the waterfall thing, you know, of course you want the life jacket. Of course you want the drugs. And that's necessary at times. But you got to go upstream and figure out what went in the water. Um, concepts like that are throughout the book and throughout the series, the Betrayal Documentary series. So that's betrayaldocumentary.com. You guys will love the documentary because it is fascinating. And one of the things I love about it is, as Dr. Tom says, he breaks it down into everyday language and I think that's one reason he and I have hit it off so much because although I'm not a doctor I love reading the research and one of the things I have found through that is I can then go speak to my medical community with intelligent questions and I know sometimes you guys are saying well that's the you know you're challenging the white quote authority sometimes it's not that they don't want to know. It's just that they're not always up to date on the latest things. And when it's your body, your life, I can't tell you how much I know about autoimmune (laughs) nowadays after being diagnosed with one. So do things like read the autoimmune fix and also see the documentary to educate yourself. Dr. Tom and I are so on the same page with that. Okay, back to Dr. Tom here, but that's my little soapbox. (laughs) I fully, fully agree. And, you know, um, uh, it's unfair. We think that our doctors are supposed to know everything. That's not true. They can't. They can't. But they should research for you. So if you take my book into them and you've highlighted a page, you say, you know, I read this three times and this really makes sense to me. Can you look into this for me and see if this relates to me? And if they're unwilling to do it because it's a nuisance or they've got to see X number of patients in a day or for whatever reason, you don't fire that doctor. You just ask the wrong person to do the research for you. You find a new doctor to add to your healthcare team. There's no one person that's going to know everything. It's not possible. It's not possible. So you want to bring someone onto your healthcare team. And what you'll learn in the book and in the betrayal documentary series is the questions to ask of yourself. Um, I'll give you an example. I'm seeing a person right now who she's been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called diffuse scleroderma. It's a nasty, nasty disease and diffuse means it's going over her entire body, her lungs, her brain, her gut. And she has visited the top three professionals, specialists in scleroderma in the country, the top three, plus a bunch of other doctors, but she went to the top three. And they all evaluated her and they had different recommendations of what kind of life jacket to wear. And well, she was smart enough to know that uh, the statistics for diffuse scleroderma are not good. And those statistics of how long people live and how much they suffer are all people who took the drugs that were recommended to be taken. And the doctors are recommending the same drugs that produce the statistics that help them live a little bit longer than if they don't take the drugs, but it doesn't stop the thing and it continues and you suffer more. So she was smart enough to think, well, wait a minute, I don't want to go down that path. I'm going to go down another path. And somehow she found my book. And the first thing she did was she got off wheat and dairy and sugar immediately, immediately. And she read the book and she understood no yes, cheating. No cheating. And she started feeling better in three days, three days. She started feeling better. Now it didn't stop everything, but it's, and she said the other people 
who went into the support groups for diffuse scleroderma with her at the same time, they were in wheelchairs and she was looking healthier than when she came in. Uh, so this is some months down the road. They're already in wheelchairs. And they, and they just looked at her and, and they said, what do you do? And I, she said, well, can I just change what I eat? And it's really helping. You know, I still have symptoms, but it's helping. They all refused because they love their pizza yeah. or their sandwiches or whatever it was. And they said, well, my doctor didn't say anything about that. And she said, well, neither did mine. It just made sense. and It's not going to hurt me. So I tried it. I feel better. I have more energy. My bowels are working better. I'm breathing a little bit better. But she said they just wouldn't do it. She stopped going to the group because it was a bunch of dying people. And they were just caught in that system. That, that's her situation. Then she came to me and she said, no one ever asked the questions that you asked in the book, which were, go back upstream. What happened to you? So she was born, her mother was born and raised in a small town in Ohio, a steel mill town and a coal mining town, both there. So very toxic water, very toxic air. And when her mother was growing up, and this woman's in her 50s, so she was, and when she was born, her mom was in hospital, and she, she said to the nurse, you know, that there's a baby over in the baby ward just keeps screaming and screaming. Tell me that's not my baby. And the nurse said, well, actually it is. And so she was screaming from the time she was born. That's a little baby in pain. And is it possible that she has high accumulations of lead? or mercury, or arsenic, or toxic chemicals that are like gasoline on the fire of her nervous system. Of course it's possible, but no one's ever asked the question. And then she, she said she grew up, the house they lived in bordered on a cornfield, and she'd go out and play in the cornfield, and the dust crops croppers would fly by and spray the corn, and they'd play in the midst of the spray. And then they'd play in the corn every day, playing hide-and-seek and going down to the pond in the middle of the cornfield and jumping in the pond. So she was being exposed to all these toxic chemicals constantly. Could that have contributed? Could that be accumulative in her body, triggering the inflammation? And the, the answer is absolutely yes, it could be, but you just have to check. And no one's ever checked. So she's doing the tests now. I mean, she just came last week. Uh, so she's doing a bunch of tests now. And uh, I'll say one more thing about that. My favorite patients are the ones that say, I went to Mayo and they don't know what's wrong. <laughs> and I said, that's great. That's really great. Congratulations. You know, and they look at me like I'm a nutcase. And I said, that means you don't have a disease because if you had a disease, Mayo Clinic would find it. You've got dysfunction. Let's see what's not functioning right. So the tests we're going to do are tests looking for function. We're not going to do tests looking for disease. Yep. And they go, oh, well, that kind of makes sense. So we look for heavy metals. We look for toxic chemicals. We look, do you have enough vitamins? We look to see if you're digesting and absorbing the nutrients from the food that you're eating. We look to see if you have sensitivity to foods. We just look for the basic stuff that throws gasoline on the fire causing the inflammation that manifests wherever your genetic vulnerability is. Absolutely. And one thing, I, before we take this quick commercial break, I wanted to mention about groups. I love that she left because I always say, you want to be one of the less healthy in the group. What's that theory? Like you're the closest to the five people that's you right. hang around with? That's right. So, <laughs> that's right. so that's leave really the group. Good. When you that's become really the good. top dog in the group, find another group. So <laughs> we'll take this quick commercial yeah. break and we'll finish up here with Dr. Tom really quick. We'll be right back. <laughs> Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Om Times Experts program. With Om Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.omtimes.com.
Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Hey, Dr. Phil here. You know, I help people solve difficult problems every day, but one problem has me stumped, childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. Luckily, the Feeding America network of local food banks collects surplus food, giving hope to hungry children and their families. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio. I'm your host, Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And today we're here with Dr. Thomas O'Brien, the author of The Autoimmune Fix, as well as the documentary, Betrayal, The Autoimmune Disease Solution, They're Not Telling You. It's an investigation into the global effects of issues underlying our autoimmune system and chronic disease that your body is in. If you're in the height of a flare, your body's in major dysfunction. So let's talk a little bit more. We just have a few minutes left, and I want to make sure we have time for them to know, again, where to get your book, where to get the documentary. But if there's one thing other besides get educated, what else would you tell people to do? I've got to understand the basics, not the technical stuff, but the basics of how your body works and how your lifestyle contributes to that. But after that, if there's only one thing you're going to do, only one, it's fix the gut. That the bacteria in your gut, called the microbiome, controls, it runs, the technical term modulates every function in your body. Heart function, brain function, for every one message from the brain going down to the gut, there's nine messages from the gut going up to the brain that your microbiota, the bacteria in your gut, there's 10 times more cells of that bacteria in the body than there are uh, human cells in the body. You add up all the bone cells, muscle cells, skin cells, organ cells, add them all up, there's 10 times more than that number of bacteria in your gut. That it is the control center. So you want to fix your gut. Just about out of time, doctor. Would you have just about one minute? Tell us all about your site. You've weaved it in here pretty well, but let's talk about your site, the dr.com. Thank you. Thank you so much. So if you go to the dr.com forward slash gift, G-I-F-T, we've put together an online education system to walk you through how to think differently about your health. And there are short videos. They're like 12 to 25 minute videos on different topics. It's there for you for free. Try it for free for 30 days. If you like it, then join. It's the dr.com forward slash gift. Those are the things that will keep you busy now for a while to come, but it will completely change how you look at taking care of yourself and your family. Dr. Tom, oh, it's always just profound and my pleasure when I could talk to you. I just get so tickled whenever we have a chance to talk. Thank you so much for being once again on the Autoimmune Hour. Everyone, go have a great weekend, whatever your adventures, and enjoy. The information provided on LifeInterruptedRadio.com is for educational purposes only. What you hear, read, and see on Life Interrupted Radio is based on experience only. The information presented here should never be used for any legal, diagnostic, or treatment purposes. Always seek sound legal, medical, and or professional advice regarding any problems, conditions, and any of the recommendations you see, hear, or read here on Life Interrupted Radio. You've been listening to Life Interrupted Radio. To learn more, listen to other shows, and gain free resources that can help empower your life, be sure to stop by lifeinterruptedradio.com. This episode is brought to you by mindfulnessinactionbook.com. To get your free four-minute guided meditation to relax, refresh, and renew in just four minutes, and who doesn't have four minutes? 
Stop by mindfulnessinactionbook.com now. This guided meditation is in handy MP3 format so you can use it anywhere, anytime. Download it now at mindfulnessinactionbook.com. Do you want to be a better leader? Have better relationships? Become more self-aware? Be a better communicator? Hi, I'm Sharon Saylor, best-selling author, professional speaker, and executive coach. And my life passion is empowering professionals to be the best that they can be. After years of working with professionals, I've discovered the seven things nobody is telling you that can cost you your clients, sales, and even your career. And I want to give it to you free. You've heard my show. You know my passion. And maybe we'll be working together sooner rather than later. So go grab this ebook now to find out the seven things that's costing you big time over at SharonSailor.com forward slash radio gift. Research shows we apologize up to 10 times a day, and most of the time, we say sorry as a response to someone else's mistake. What if we thanked people instead of all that unnecessary apologizing? So instead of saying, sorry, I'm rambling, you say, thank you for listening. Join us at ProjectForgive.com, a free non-religious resource on global forgiveness.